Coach, first of all, thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Uh, happy Wednesday to you. Uh, my first question uh, for you is just how you doing? How's everything going? I know we're a little over two months into this thing. Just uh, what is life like right now trying to recruit and build and sort of sustain some sort of normalcy in a time where there is almost no normalcy? Well, really, this has given us a strong opportunity to recruit. You know, um, uh, we're meeting with our players in the mornings and uh, having team meetings, having everything like we would if they were here. Um, but yet, you know, obviously we're not going out to practice. So uh, that time we're using to recruit and uh, seems like we're very, very busy and it's been a lot of fun. Well, I just – I can't imagine sort of going through this process. Uh, I know you guys have been doing the Zooms just like every other program. Uh, what has it been like as a head coach to sort of your first year to be dealt this sort of blow of, okay, I'm expecting to go into my first spring in a matter of, it seemed like, days, and all of a sudden you're told you can't even have any physical contact with any of your guys? Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, once you, once you get down, you know, they – they put the rules down to you. You try to make the best out of the time that you have. And we've done that. And, you know, the most disappointing thing probably is, is that I felt like we were uh, earning trust between the players and us and us and the players. And then when they left, uh, that's been the most difficult time um, in, in team meetings. Uh, you really can't hear the response of the players, you know, because you have to mute everybody and all that. So, it's been certainly a little bit of a difference, a little bit of a change, but uh, we feel like we're getting a lot done. And none of our coaches went, oh, man, this, this, and then we just went to work. And we still have time, and we're using it. At the same time, you've got two brand-new coordinators, and we got a chance to hear from them. I think it was last month, and they both uh, really praised you, and they said, you know, nobody has written a book on how to handle all this, but if somebody did, maybe it should be Sam Pittman because the way you've sort of taken the bull by the horns – this positive attitude. It seems everything we've heard from the players, they appreciate you so much the way you're doing it. Personally, what did you do from the time we said, okay, we have to completely adjust. We have to change what we're doing. Personally, what did you say? All right, guys, this is what we're going to do. And this is the way we're going to attack this thing. Well, we do everything as a staff. You know, we talk back and forth as a staff on what's best for our kids and what's best for us to win. How can we how can we win? What can we do now to help us win in the future? And so we I just started jotting things down, things to go over with the staff. And some of them, uh, you know, we all like some of them. There was better ideas from some of our coaching staff. And and we kind of put it together. Uh, I want to make a huge emphasis on our players and staying in contact with our players, knowing where they're at, what they're doing things of that nature, not necessarily not trusting them that they're going to do what we ask them to do, but, you know, uh, having three different weight pro programs and, and running programs and different things for if they had weights, if they didn't, all these things uh, we had to talk about. And uh, our strength staff did a great job along with Dave, our sports medicine guy, and, and uh, they all did a really good job. But we kind of did it as a, as a group, as a unit. But the bottom line is we had time and we wanted to use it and we wanted to use it better, in our opinion, better than anybody else. What's the growth you've seen from uh, Coach Odom, uh, Coach Bryles, just seeing those guys sort of realize, okay, we got in here, we were sort of implementing this defense, this offense. Where did, what have you seen from those guys, the way they've sort of attacked and approached the offense and the defense? You know, we still have meetings, you know, so they, they're uh, – uh, we started slow. We knew it was going. To, we figured it was going to be a while uh, until we were able to get back together. So, I wanted to go back to teaching toughness, discipline, fundamentals, uh, all those things. And those two coaches that you just spoke of are outstanding teachers. And so we wanted to teach our offense, teach our defense, and Scott Fountain. We wanted to teach our special teams. And so we allotted a, a certain number of time each day to get that done. But what's happening is I think they've become even better teachers because they slowed down. You know, so much in spring ball, you're going fast, 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 trying to get this in, trying to get that in. And then now, once, once we get our freshmen in, we're going to go back and go over it all once again so the freshmen can kind of uh, get involved and, and start learning as well. But those guys are really good men. They understand how to talk to people. Uh, and uh, that's a big reason why I hired them. 
Well, I know you're an offensive line coach by trade. I actually talked to Travis Swanson, one of your former guys yesterday, and he just had nothing but praise and just how much he appreciated you and how big you were for his growth. Uh, the simple fact is football is, of course, a contact sport. How much do you think when we do get back on the field, the absence of this physical time in the spring when you do get to hit, maybe not go as live as you would in years past, how much of an impact do you see that having on a season that may creep up whatever that season is down the road, the fact that these guys, I mean, mentally, sure, we're all there, but at the same time, they did not get to hit each other for months. Well, I think if we get – it depends on when we come back. You know, I think if we get back early June, uh, I don't see it being a, a huge significant disadvantage. I know everybody would disagree with me there, but uh, I go back from the olden days whenever the whole team came in you know, in August, you know, the guys besides the guys that had to go to summer school or the heavy kids that, you know, needed to get some weight off. Everybody else went home. So I believe it can be done. I think if we get in here early June, I think as long as our kids have trained, uh, I think they're going to allow us to have a ball a little bit faster, possibly. I think they're going to allow us maybe to OTA, some things of that nature. I don't know all this, but it's been talked about. And if that's the case, I think we can catch up. Uh, obviously, not having spring ball is a big disappointment. And it is because not only who's first team, second team, who you think's an SEC player, who's not, but where do you play them? Do we have the left tackle right? Do we have the nose guard the correct? Do we have a strong safety? Should it be a free safety? All those things you can answer uh, in the spring, and there's nobody watching. So it's not like, oh, I had to make a mistake on a Saturday to fix it. You could fix it, you know, when you're out there practicing. Well, during this weird and difficult time, you've got to manage your own program, your own team. Have you talked to any other – whether it be SEC head coaches or first-year head coaches like yourself about maybe not scheme-wise, but, man, how are you approaching this? How are you getting through to your kids? You know, we're all trying to implement our philosophy and, you know, our mindset. But at the same time, uh, it's our first year and we can't see our guys. Yeah, I've talked to a few coaches and asked what they're doing and how they're running their Zoom meetings and all that kind of stuff. But we felt really confident about what – what we our plan was and a lot of times if you talk to people they're going to ask you what you're doing and I don't want to tell them so uh, I talked to a few good friends of mine but other than that I didn't uh, because I'm very confident in what we're doing and very confident that um, uh, we're doing it as good as anybody else. I know it's hard to judge position battles and you can't get really a depth chart together when you again don't have physical contact but Guys that you've seen, I know a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, you mentioned guys that have stepped up. Um, and even during this sort of dead period that we're in where you can't have a lot of contact, uh, maybe seniors, guys that you're just thinking, man, the, these guys are the real deal. We need them. We're leaning on them. And they're, they've really become sort of the vocal leaders of this team. Well, I like our secondary. I like the way they work. Um, uh, I like their passion for the game. Uh, um, I really have been impressed with them and the way they work. Our, our old line, you know, is is a hard working offensive line. Uh, we're very impressed with there. We have some running backs, of course. Everybody knows about Rakeem and all those things, but we have some running backs we feel like uh, are going to be good players. And then I like our team speed. Uh, we we obviously have to get uh, faster, but I like our team speed. If I had anything that I wish that we could do a little bit better is be a little stronger and, and, and be a bigger football team. Uh, football is a big man sport, and you have to go recruit that. And if you, can't, if you haven't recruited it, then you've got to get them bigger in the weight room. And uh, that's, what we're, that's where we're headed. So there's a lot of disappointments from the virus, obviously the safety and, and the country and all that's the main concern. Football is certainly way down the line on all that. But uh, if we could have had them here, uh, for spring ball and for the more importantly even than that is the conditioning and getting bigger uh, I think we would have made a, a, a lot of strides I know you mentioned the virus too is we don't know what's going to happen I know these votes are going on and then you got one in the SEC on Friday and NCAA saying this and doing that so I, I realize but all that kind of takes a backseat to you know health and public yeah. safety Absolutely. You know, moving forward, when we do get back on the field, whether that's in the fall, the winter, maybe next spring, whenever, 
it, it seems trending wise, it may be in front of either no fans or limited fans. Have you thought about the energy or the impact of running out through the A with, you know, maybe you hear the band, but you don't hear the roar, you don't hear the crowd, or even you guys are scheduled to go to Notre Dame. Can you imagine running out in front of touchdown Jesus without hearing thousands of people screaming at you? Is that, have you thought about that at all? Or is it just sort of, it is what it is? Well, we'll do whatever they tell us to do and all that, but I cannot imagine going into Razorback into our stadium without the fans of the state of Arkansas in there. Can't imagine it. Uh, that that's worth points for us, and and uh, we need to we need our fans in there. We have a unique fan base. So to answer your question, no, I could not imagine that. If that's how we're supposed to play, then we'll go do it. But I think our fans are advantage in our stadium and, and as big an advantage as any other stadium they go into. I just think our fans are unique. And uh, certainly uh, for our players, uh, I'm just praying that they allow, you know, safety, all that, of course. But uh, I'm, I'm just praying that they let the, the state of Arkansas come see the Razorbacks play. Amen. I hope the same thing. Just a couple more for you, Coach. Um, one of the big things is, you know, it's funny. I actually got this question from my mother because she's not – she's a, been a drama teacher for 35 years at Cabot. My wife's an English teacher. But, man, they saw your press conference. They were watching our coverage. And when you got emotional, I was getting texts left and right from my wife, my mother, and they just said, I love him. I love Coach Pitt. I love this guy. And we've seen sort of even the videos that have come out. I know the recent videos, not even with Arkansas, but your two kids that were drafted from Georgia in the first round. Yeah and just the energy and the really the draw they get on social media and the emotional connection that you not only have with this state, but also your kids. I think that has gone such a long way in this time where we're all sort of separated and people are just dying for some football. What is it about your personality and just you that makes that connection with not only this state and we know the passion and we know Miss Jamie hated you for leaving to go to Georgia a few years ago, but just how much that those kids mean to you and sort of the way you recruit and build on that emotion and that pride that you take? Well, <clears throat> I'm comfortable with who I am. And uh, whether it's now or whether I meet you uh, in Walmart or uh, wherever it is, I'm just me. And I'm very, very comfortable with being me. And I'm very, very comfortable with with making other people around me feel important because you know why? Because they are. And uh, again, I say it all the time, the title of your job does not make the man that you are or the woman. You're, you're just another person on this earth. And because I'm the head coach at Arkansas, I'm very, very fortunate, but I'm not a better person. I'm not anything else. I just want to be me. And I think people appreciate that because there are some people that think that the job makes them better than somebody else. And it's, it certainly doesn't. And uh, I'm trying to earn trust and uh, I want people to like me, you know, and, uh, but I also want to be myself and I'm that way in recruiting. Uh, you're not going to see one person in recruiting the next person as a head coach. And I don't want it to any way that come across as soft or this, that, and other, because that's certainly not the, not the case. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get the ultimate out of everybody that's on our football team. But there's a time to coach football and there's a time to be a man. And uh, there's, there, to me, they're separate. Uh, when we're on the field, uh, we're trying to win football games and we're trying to not let, every, not let a detail go by that's going to help us win a football game. So my whole thing is I want the whole state, I want our football team, and I want everybody around me to run through a wall with me and uh, let's go win some football games, make everybody proud. And that's, that's how I feel. I'm very passionate about Arkansas, as you know, and, and uh, that's just how, that's how I feel. I love to hear it. Well, Coach, uh, only a couple more and we'll knock these out. So we have some fan questions, and these are real rapid fires. So you don't have to think about these too much. Right. But during this, I, I know you're busy. You're obviously still working. You're working your tail off. You're recruiting and doing all this. But if you do have any downtime, so like, like the rest of us, we've had some downtime to either do whatever during this quarantine. So these are real quick. All right, your quarantine, either go to show or movie. Show. Show. What show would that be? Concerts. Love music. 
Love it. All right, now, quarantine. Now you just asked me a question that I can't go to because you know <laughs> we're quarantined. But if I had a chance to go to a concert, I'd go in a heartbeat. Love them. Man, well, we saw you on the virtual concert, so we'll give you that one. You got to go to a virtual <laughs> concert. All right, second one, go to quarantine food. What you, you want something, what are you going for? Mexican. Love it. All right. Favorite, let's say, uh, favorite artist, since you're doing concert, favorite artist right now, favorite song you're listening to? Luke Combs, Six Feet Apart. Man, quick, on the draw. All right. Now, I understand, too, you got a little swimming time. We're getting warmer. Are we hitting the pool soon enough? I know Memorial Day is coming up. I've been in the pool twice. I heated it twice, and and uh, we've been out there. We're, you know, if the farmers need the rain, we're praying for the rain everywhere but in my backyard. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. All right, and this is another one, too. So if you had to be stuck in a quarantine house, what other SEC coach would you want to be stuck in a house with? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Nick Saban. I thought it may be saving. I thought it may be saving. Coach, I love it. That's really all I've got for you.